Hello, this is Jerry McGee of Abiding Life Ministries. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio, Overcoming Life's Obstacles. Each time we're on, which will be the first and first and the third Tuesdays of each month, I'll be teaching principles of the overcoming life. You know, the, the promises of God are to the overcomer, not to the overcome. And if we didn't go through a trial or have a problem, we wouldn't have anything to overcome. So that's a, a good way of looking at it. But we'll be on the first and third Tuesdays of each month from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, tonight I want to share with you uh, a message on a root of bitterness. And it's entitled, Bitter or Better You Can Choose. At the end of the program, you can call in to 646-595-4784 and have prayer if you'll call in. And don't forget to press uh, 1. Um, if you want to go into my website, you can, in fact, you can email me at jerrymcgeecclobal.net or you can go into our website at jerrymcgee.com. And there's teachings there that you can order, listen to for free, articles you can read. Uh, and you can sign up for our, our email and we'll notify you when we're going to be in your area. If you want to schedule a meeting, um, in your town or city or church, just uh, email me at jerrymcgee at sbcglobal.net. And let's pray before we start. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne, and I ask you, God, in Jesus' name, to move mightily in the lives of each person who's listening in. Father, I ask you to cover us and Dorothy Carruthers and her family, cover us all with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we pray for your ministering angels to minister to us. We confess, Lord, we don't know how to pray as we ought. And so, Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit makes intercession for us as we pray. And, Lord, I pray for each person who listens in that you will let them and us know the truth that sets us free. Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose upon each person the conviction of sin, the fear of the Lord, and a spirit of repentance. And, Lord, I ask you to loose your ministering angels to minister to each person who's listening in. Thank you, Lord, that we've been raised to sit with you in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. And so now, Lord, I take my seat in the heavenly places. I take the keys you've given me to the kingdom of, to, to the kingdom of heaven to bind and loose. And in Jesus' name, I bind you Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places. I bind you in the heavenly places and on this earth, forbid you to work with, communicate with, make contact with anyone on this earth or in the heavenly places to work divination against this ministry, against uh, any person who's listening in, against the, the sponsor of this program in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I bind you. Uh, for it is written, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And, Lord, we loose your ministering angels to minister to each person. Are not your angels ministering spirits sent to help and care for those who are to receive your salvation? In Jesus' name. Father, we bind every spirit that would not confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and we bind us all to the truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that each person listening in will never be the same after you share what you have to share through me tonight. Lord, I ask that you be glorified in Jesus' name. And, you know, how we respond to our circumstances will determine whether or not we become bitter or whether we become better. It's better to become better because bitter, bitterness will destroy you. Bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting for someone else to die. And so how you respond in the midst of your circumstances will determine if you become bitter or if you become better. In Hebrews 12, it says, Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification without which no man will see the Lord. And so uh, King James says, Pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see the Lord. And so in the midst of our circumstances, the way we do this is to not let the sun go down on our anger, to deal with our sin before sundown, to forgive, uh, to pursue peace with all men, and to pursue holiness. And sanctification and through uh, the trials we go through if we ask the Lord to show us what it is he's trying to teach us in the midst of that trial and then deal with it God's way and then we get conformed to the image of Christ 
and that's how we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Bitterness can be described, according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, as a dangerous era or a schism, uh, a breach of charity, which is love. Um, it it um, means that bitterness will lead you to apostasy, which means to abandon what you uh, profess. It means a desertion of your faith, a departure of faith or from your religion. And so bitterness will lead you onto a pathway of apostasy, of falling away from the faith. Uh, bitterness means extreme en- enmity or ill will. It means hatred or having a grudge towards someone. Um, it means irreconcilable enmity or anger of passions and emotions. It, um, it means sharpness, um, severity of temper, biting sarcasm, extreme wickedness. In the Hebrew, bitterness means uh, discouragement or a feeling of hopelessness. Um, it's kind of like I, I feel trapped into a situation I can't get out of, and that's the root meaning of the word bitter. It's not just a bitter taste in your mouth, which is one of the causes of acid reflux, but it's also a feeling of despair and despondency. It's unresolved grief, which opens us up to, um, which is a doorway for for bitterness. You know, if someone hurts you or offends you and you let the sun go down on it, uh, God gives us till sundown, according to Ephesians chapter 4, says do not let the sun go down on your anger because you give a mighty foothold to the devil. And so we have till till sundown to deal with our anger or our hurt or our bitterness. And then if, if the next day, if, if I let the sun go down on it, the next day it's unforgiveness, and then it turns into bitterness, and bitterness will end up killing us if we don't repent. Um, bitterness is unresolved grief, which opens, up us, opens us up to a doorway of bitterness. Uh, you know, the Bible says there's a sorrow that leads to repentance, and there's a sorrow that leads to death. And so if, if in my sorrow I don't go to God, uh, which would be the sorrow that leads to repentance. Uh, the opposite of that is the sorrow that leads to death. If I don't deal with it, it leads to death. In fact, one of the meanings of bitterness means terminal death. It, it means barrenness or fruitlessness. Um, it's spiritual adultery, which also opens us up to barrenness. In Numbers 5, if a, if a man in the Old Testament thought his wife was committing physical adultery, he would take her to the priest, and the priest would mix up a water from the dirt from the, the floor of the uh, where they slaughtered the animals. He would he would take some of that dirt, mix it with water, and make her drink it. If she was guilty of committing physical adultery, then her stomach would swell, her thigh would waste away, she would be barren, and it would open her up to bitterness. Now that's for physical adultery, but in but in Ezekiel 36 it talks about spiritual adultery and it says oh harlot hear the word of the lord you know if we pray a prayer to receive jesus as our savior and our heart goes after another lover we commit spiritual adultery and so sin opens us up to spiritual adultery because sometimes we love if we love sin more than we love the lord then that's committing adultery against our bridegroom jesus but it goes on to say in ezekiel 36 oh harlot hear the word of the lord he's saying basically you're not like a physical prostitute and i'm paraphrasing a physical prostitute gets paid for what she does but a spiritual prostitute pays her lovers and it goes on to say the destruction that comes and it's uh, numbers five which is a curse of the law of jealousy which causes our stomach to swell our thigh to waste away and it causes bitterness and it causes barrenness uh, b- bitterness causes us to be fruitless uh opening us up to terminal death In John 15, it says, Every branch in me that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire and are gathered up and thrown into the fire. And so as Christians, if we uh, are in Christ and we don't produce good fruit, and bitterness is bad fruit, when we don't produce good fruit, which is the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, then we're producing bad fruit and god says will be cut off as a branch and gathered up and burned in a fire so uh, god expects christians to produce fruit in fact he says in john 15 you didn't choose me but i chose you that you might go and bear fruit 
And he goes on in that passage to say, you're my, you're my friend if you do the things I say. He says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you that you might go and bear fruit. So that's one thing that a Christian has to bear. If not, we get cut off and thrown into a fire. And bitterness is a work of the flesh, and it's a bad fruit. Ephesians 4.31 says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away with, from you along with all malice. Um, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other just as God has forgiven you. Therefore, since we have, um, since, I'm sorry, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Hebrews 4:14 4, says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we, do, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one which has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that you might receive mercy and grace in time of need. You know, there's a throne of grace that I go to, and when I, I have to humble myself, to go to that throne of grace. And when I go through a trial, if I take all my pain, all the stuff to God's throne of grace, deal with it his way, ask God what he's trying to teach us through the trial, forgive every person involved, then we become better in the midst of that trial. But if we don't go to God in that trial, we come short of the grace of God and we receive a root of bitterness. And of course, uh, how, uh, how we're trained up can mar our perspective of God. Um, for example, parents model for us a picture of what God's like. And so if our parents lied to us, well, we believe a lie that God's a liar too. If our parents didn't love us, the lies God doesn't love us. If, we, uh, if, if our parents never guided us or directed us or have to solve a problem, the lie is God's the same way. So in your trial, if you have difficulty going to the throne of grace, then you need to deal with your mother-daddy issues because, God is nothing like our mother and father. God is not a man that he can lie. God loves you with an everlasting love. God will never fail you or forsake you. The scripture says that sons of God are led by the spirit of God, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Where, uh, But if you grew up with parents that uh, gave you a perverted image of God, you've got a lot of, God, uh, got a par- a lot of parent issue, issues to deal with. Uh, so that you won't be hindered in going to the throne of grace. And that's a whole different message. I believe you can find that on um, on archives or you can go into Jerry McGee or, or go into YouTube.com and you can pull up Jerry McGee and you can find the message on um, why we faint. Uh, but we faint. And instead of going to God's throne of grace, we come short of the grace of God and we um Instead of instead of going to God, we give up and quit and want to bail out. Uh, and so that's why we faint and give up. But you can find that message. But you either go to God's throne of grace to get strengthened, confirmed, established, and perfected, or you come short of the grace of God. And so if you have difficulty going to God when you have a problem, and if you're a fainter, you need to ask the Lord what he's trying to show you. Because if you really knew how much God loved you, you would run to God's throne of grace. And so in your trial, you'll either be conformed to the image of Christ by dealing with your pain at the throne of grace, or if you refuse to go, you get conformed into the image of the beast um, or the one who hurts you. You become like the person you judge, it says in Romans 2.1. So you need to deal with all your judgments. In Romans 8.28, it says, for uh, everything works together for good to those that love the Lord, to the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to become conformed into the image of his son. And so the purpose of the trial is to conform you into the image of Christ, not into the image of the beast. When you don't go to the throne of grace, you get conformed into the image of the beast, and that is a root of bitterness. In fact, in, in, in Revelation chapter 9, it talks about Lucifer as a, as a star that fell, and that in, in his, in his name was Wormwood, which is bitterness. So another, another word for Lucifer is bitter. Um, you know, the scripture says that um, uh, in speaking of Jesus, he says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon your neck 
and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble, and you shall find rest for your soul. And so uh, in Song of Solomon, when the groom, when the king is talking to the, to the, um, talking to, to the bride, he says, your, your mouth is so, your mouth is sweet, my darling. So God's true children have a sweet mouth, not a bitter mouth. But if we are expressing bitterness in our life, that's the character and nature of Satan. In 1 Corinthians 8, it says that if, if, if someone sees us dining in an idol's temple, uh, that we will, just, we will ruin the brother who's weak for whose sake Christ died. And it talks about when we wound them, it means that we instill our pattern in their life. And so that's why we have to deal with uh, unforgiveness because when you hold unforgiveness towards someone, you get conformed into their image or the image of the beast. And so, you know, when you're bitter towards somebody and you refuse to forgive them, then you become like the person that you judge. Uh, I have a friend that says whenever you judge someone, you're writing a purchase order for that same thing to come to your house. Until you and I forgive the people that have hurt us, we can't be forgiven. It says Jesus said if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. Forgiveness is a choice. It's not an emotion. I choose to forgive because I love Jesus more than I love the demon of unforgiveness. I don't have to feel like it. I don't have to want to. I don't have to think it's, it, it's fair. It doesn't matter. It's a, a Forgiveness is not an emotion. It's a choice. I choose to do it because I love the Lord more than I love anything else. And it's idolatry when I don't forgive. And Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And so that's something that we all have to do. And it's an ongoing thing. If you saw every sin in your life, uh, it would be too overwhelming. It's a it's a process that that takes a lifetime to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's not a one time thing. It's an ongoing crucifying the flesh, giving up our life, so that the life of Christ can be manifested in our life. And so, what God allows in our life is for our transformation and for our good to conform us to the image of Christ. In James, it says, "Count it all joy when you go through various trials." knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And then another scripture, I don't know the reference, but it says, we have need of endurance, for after we have done the will of God, we'll receive what's promised. In Matthew, it says, it's those who endure to the end who'll be saved. And so life is full of circumstances, full of suffering and things we go through, and how we respond in those circumstances will determine whether or not we're better or better. Um, the things that dis- distress you now, you can re- you can trace back to your childhood. The very same things that bother you now, that distress you now with your children, with your family, with your mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, sons-in-laws, uh, husbands, wives. The things that distress you now are the very things that distress you in your childhood. And God is pointing these things out. He lets other people mirror what he's trying to change in us. Um, and so the purpose of your trial is so that you can operate out of the Holy Spirit and not react. You know, if you've got a wound or an unresolved issue, somebody can say say something to you, look at you a certain way, and you blow up. Either you outwardly blow up or you blow up on the inside. You've got a button pusher. And so, um, so whenever you have a button pusher, you're going to react in that situation with anger, either suppressed anger or outward verbally expressed anger. And um, God, used, God is working in us so that we can get healed of those button pushers so we can respond out of the Holy Spirit and not react out of anger. Continue to allow conflict to come into our lives in whatever situation that we're in conflict until we take it to the throne of grace. You know, just like the children of Israel, they kept going around the mountain. Uh, and so that's what we do. And so whenever you go through a problem, take it to God, deal with mother-daddy issues, take it to God and deal with it his way. Because in everything you go through, I've learned and from my own personal experience, but also through what the Bible teaches us, that there's a lesson in everything we go through. In Deuteronomy 8, 1, it says, all, all the commandments that I have commanded you today, you shall be careful to do. 
so that you might live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God swore to your forefathers. You know, we have a land to possess. What we possess is what we didn't possess in our childhood. The things that are in the present are issues of the giants of our past and that we didn't conquer in childhood. And God doesn't show us all the giants at once because it would be too much for us. He shows them, shows us to us, shows them to you little by little. And as you conquer these things, you enter God's rest in all of these areas. It says in, in Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you and try, test you to know what's in your heart, whether or not you're going to keep his commandments. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3 says, He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna, which you do not know, nor did your forefathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In Deuteronomy 8, the Lord tells us, uh, why he led Israel in all of all of those uh, years in the wilderness, it was to humble them, and that's why he lets us go through trials to to prove us, uh, to know what's in our heart, um, to know if we're going to keep his commandments or not. And of course, God knows what we're going to do before we do it. But sometimes we need to see why how we're reacting in our circumstances. Uh, God knows, but he put he he tests us so that we can see what's there. Um, in in Exodus 15 verse 22, it says, "Then Moses led the children of Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out to the wilderness of Shur, and they went for three years, three days in the wilderness, and found no water. And when they came to Mara, which means bitter." They could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. The people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And, of course, the tree represented Christ. And he threw the tree in the waters, and the waters became sweet. And see, when we go through trials, if we go to the throne of grace, appropriate what Jesus did for us at Calvary, he makes our bitter water sweet. And so it's, and then it goes on to say, they made for there he made for them a statute and regulation, and he te, and there he tested them, and he said, God said, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what's right in His sight, not your sight, but His sight, and give ear to His commandments, means stretch out your ear to hear, um, and keep all of His statutes. God says, I'll put none of the diseases on you which I put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Not used to be your healer, but he's our healer today. In verse 22, 27, it says, Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seven date palms, and they camped there beside the, wa- beside the waters. <clears throat> In Isaiah 53, verse 3, it says, speaking of Jesus, he was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And from one who men hide their face from him, he was despised and did not, and we did not esteem him. Surely our grief he himself bore, and our sorrows, our grief he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, esteemed him stricken of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the chastening for our well-being came upon him. And by his scourgings we are healed. And we, like sheep, have all gone astray. Each has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of of us all to fall upon him. And that... When Isaiah gave that prophecy, he was looking forward to Calvary. And then in Matthew 8, Matthew was looking back to Calvary when he he spoke in Matthew 8, 16. And when everything, and when evening had come, they brought to him, brought to Jesus, many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out their spirits with the word, and he healed all of them who were ill. 
in order that what was spoken of to Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, saying he himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. In 1 Peter 2.24, he said, And he himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross, that we might die to sin, live to righteousness, for by his wounds we are healed. And so in healing, we have to die to sin, live to righteousness, and by his stripes be healed. And, of course, the way we deal with sin, Jesus said, I mean, God said in 1 John um, 1a, if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. In Matthew 3, 10, it says that the ax is already laid at the root of every tree that does not produce good fruit. And so you can take Jesus back to the root of your problem and allow him to sweeten your bitter water. Unless you and I understand the dealing of God in our life, we can, uh, we can let bitterness become uh, in our lives even toward God. If you're bitter toward God, I can tell you we're bitter toward your parents. And when we understand the dealings of God, the chastenings of God and his discipline, then it helps us to understand why we go through trials. And it really helps us to know that how we respond in the midst of those trials will determine our victory or our defeat. And so we'll never change really until the Holy Spirit uh, brings pressure into our life. And we can praise God that the sufferings we go through is the pressure that he uses to change us. And some causes of consistent bitterness, of course, unforgiveness for sure. But in our lives, some... uh, uh, and letting the sun go down on our anger too um, But we have the same problem in our life That we're maybe judging others for If you're like me Many times maybe something One of my family members will do or say And I'll think <clears throat> I did the very same thing And so if you learn to know I mean if you learn that God allows other people to mirror What he's trying to change in us It makes it a lot easier to forgive When God's trying to show me I did the very same thing Another cause of persistent bitterness is guilt. It's partly my fault. You know, if if my conscience isn't clear, I don't have confidence toward God. Another is that uh, a cause of bitterness is that I just want revenge or I have temporal values. I'm just greedy. Uh, Another is I'm taking up offenses for others. You know, God gives me grace for me, my stuff, but he doesn't give me the grace to to, um, take up offenses for someone else. Uh, it's kind of like um, there's a scripture that says when you um, uh, you can yank a dog's ears and you get bit. I, I don't know the scripture. I'm, 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 it's in Proverbs. But when you take up offenses for someone else, it's like you're meddling in someone else's business, and in the midst of it, you'll get hurt. Um, and bitterness comes into our life any time, basically, it comes into any time in our life when we let the sun go down on our anger and we um, choose not to forgive or not to deal with it God's way. But it comes in through idolatry, which all sin is idolatry, loss of expectations, uh, allowing other people to control us. You know, the only yoke that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the yoke of Jesus. If I wear somebody else's yoke or somebody else is controlling me, it makes me bitter toward them. And so the only yoke that produces the fruit of the Spirit is the yoke of Jesus, where he says in Matthew eleven twenty eight and 29, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon your neck and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you shall find rest for your soul, for my burden is light and my load is easy. So um, wearing the yoke of Jesus produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I'll never be cut off when I allow the Holy Spirit to control me. But when I allow other people to control me, then that produces bitterness in the fruit of the flesh. Uh, Bitterness comes in through unresolved hurt, which is letting the sun go down on your anger, pressure of work, uh, loss of a loved one, uh, divorce. uh, You know, you can just trace all this back to sin, unforgiveness, not dealing with it, God's throne of grace comes in through childhood trauma, uh, through being verbally, mentally, sexually, physically, spiritually abused, uh, comes in through parents pressuring us to achieve. 
words that are spoken. You know, words are spiritual forces. Uh, when, with our words are the words that are spoken over us. We either speak death or life with our words. Uh, bitterness can come in through being defiled by someone else's root of bitterness. You know, there's someone gossiping to you. You might have good feelings towards someone, and then they um, you hear something else that's negative about that person. It may be true. It may be false. But it defiles you with someone else's root of bitterness. It comes in through rejection, through not being loved, not being nurtured, loss of expectation, um, being pushed into the wrong role. You know, sometimes as children you were pushed to be have to be the mama or have to be the daddy, uh, and you missed your childhood because you, your parents either were not nurturing or they just let you raise yourself. Uh, lack of nurture. Um, nurture means to feed. It means to educate. It means to train up. You know, the Bible says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And, you know, you can, all the things that I've said, you can, it all boils down to, Failure to forgive, failure to deal with things by sundown because the issue is you get hurt, you let the sun go down on it the next day, it's unforgiveness, and then it turns into bitterness. And uh, bitterness will kill you. Uh, And some consequences of bitterness, the fruit of bitterness, is cancer. You can trace cancer back to bitterness. You can trace uh, death. It... it, uh, the consequences is death because one of the one of the meanings of bitterness is terminal death. Uh, it, it can open you up to being barren or unfruitful, and that's not just you may say, "Well, I'm not barren because I have many children," but you can be spiritually barren, unfruitful. Uh, it can cause physical and chemical imbalance in your life. Uh, a lot of people that have psychological problems, they'll give them lithium to because they have a chemical imbalance, but it, it goes back to bitterness. And, you know, I've had people tell me, you know, I'm, I've already repented of everything. Well, I have too, but there's many things that we haven't repented of because we haven't been, we don't know what's down there in our heart. But we can listen to what comes out of our mouth or what we're thinking, and we can know what's been planted down in our heart. And so it's, it's a lifestyle of confessing sin. It's a lifestyle of working out our salvation with fear and trembling. And it's a way we overcome. We've got giants in our land that uh, God wants us to overcome because the promises of God are to the overcomer, not to the overcome. And so as I deal with my issues, I overcome. Um, bitterness can lower my resistance to infection in my body. It can cause aching teeth. Um, anger and bitterness can cause the muscles to tighten up. Pressure goes into the nerve and causes my teeth to ache. It, uh, can most, in, most illnesses today can be are the result of bitterness and guilt. Uh, germs will have no uh, effect on our life if there's not bitterness and guilt in our life. And that's why it's so important for us to live a repentant lifestyle, is deal with issues as they come up and not, not harbor grudges and to choose to forgive. And I, I think I've shared this before on the program, but you know, I went to lunch with someone one day, and we had a disagreement, and I said I was sorry, and she said she was sorry. And the next day, uh, and she asked me to forgive her, and I asked her to forgive me. And the next day, arguing with her in my head. And I said to the Lord, Lord, why can't I get over this? And the Lord said, she's got the same issues in her life that your mother had in her life, and you, you there's some things here you need to forgive your mother for. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know what to forgive my mother for. I've already forgiven her for everything I can think of. And the Lord said, forgive her for everything that you don't like about this person. So I started forgiving uh, forgiving my mother for being negative. For, forgive her for this, forgive her for that. And I found it was gone. You know, if you can quickly forgive someone, it's not a hard issue. But Jesus said you have to forgive from the heart. And so if you can quickly forgive, it's not a hard issue. But if you... Try to forgive, and then a month later, a week later, a day later, you're still arguing with them in your head. Uh, it's a heart issue. You've got to go back to childhood. And if your mother and daddy didn't do it, you can trace it even further back to your grandmother and grandfather and your forefathers. The bitterness can cause hard facial features, premature wrinkles, frown lines. Your face will be, you know, if you're always frowning, you're gonna, your face is going to be set in a frown, with a frowned look. Um, bitterness can cause bone diseases, 
Bitterness goes directly into the bone and your blood is made in the bone, bone marrow. Uh, psychological problems, mental illness, uh, sadness, depression, uh, despair, hopelessness, barrenness, fruitlessness, uh, heart problems, hardened heart. God says in Hebrews, today when you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. Uh, it can cause indigestion. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can cause a spiritual identification. You become like the person that you're bitter toward. Uh, you know, if you swear you're never going to be like someone, and then years later you look in the mirror and you're looking right at them, uh, it can cause a tr- depraved mind. We exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship the creature rather than the creator, and God gives us over to a depraved mind. Uh, bitterness quenches the Holy Spirit in our lives. God tells us to walk in the Spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Bitterness will hold you into, into spiritual immaturity or immaturity. There can be no fulfillment or, or development of character in our lives until we deal with bitterness. Bitterness means barrenness, uh, terminal death. Uh, bitterness can cause rotten bones. It can cause arthritis. And wherever the arthritis is uh, pretty much tells you what you're bitter toward. For example, if you've got arthritis in your feet, uh, chances are uh, you're bitter towards your past. You think the life's given you a bad deal and you're bitter towards your past. If it's in your hands, it has to do with ministry, maybe Maybe preachers or ministries or churches have done something to hurt you. Um, and uh, if it's in your back, it could be, you know, you carried the heavy loads of other people, and God tells us to cast all our care on him. So where the, where the arthritis is speaks to uh, the root of the problem. So you can find the root of the problem by going back to whatever area. And, you know, the Bible doesn't have uh, certain words in the Bible. The word arthritis is not in the Bible, but bitter is. And so you can look up all the scriptures on bitterness. The Bible says he sent his word to heal you. So it's really our choice. We can be better or we can be bitter. And it's something that we have to choose to do. So I'm going to, those of you who are listening in, I'm going to lead you in repentance and then uh, pray deliverance. And then uh, if you mm-hmm. want to call in uh, for prayer at the end of the program, you can call 646 595 Four seven eight four and press one and and we'll do we'll give you personal prayer and so what I'm going to do now if you're listening in just pray along with me and uh, ask God to forgive you as I name these things and so um, Lord in Jesus name I come before your throne and let me say this before I pray if you if you pray to receive Jesus but you've never been born again you need to be born again if your life hasn't changed from the time you receive Jesus as Savior, you need to be born again because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. All things pass away and behold, all things become new. And so, um, you know, when I accepted the Lord when I was 18 years old, my life didn't change. I kept cussing, smoking, uh, lived the same old way. I believed in God, but uh, my life didn't change. But I was born again when I was 25 years old. And that's when everything about my life changed. I wasn't perfect, but it's been a process of God perfecting me. And I'm still a long way from being perfected, but I'm on the road to perfection because I deal with my sin. I deal with the issues that come up on a daily basis. I don't harbor sin in my life. Um, And that's why it's so important to live a repentant lifestyle. Uh, Years ago, I taught a... um, I taught a seminar out in California, and I taught on being born again. And I think I've taught on this program about being born again. And you can find that in the, by going to jerrymcgee.com, and you can find that message, or you can go on to youtube.com and, and pull up Jerry McGee, and you can find that message. And Jerry is G, like George, E-R-I. McGee is M, like Mary, C, uh, G-H-E-E.com. And that, that'll take you to our website. And so if you've never been born again, Jesus said, oh, I know what I was going to share. But I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I know all these people have been born again. I mean, all these people have accepted you as Savior, but I know they haven't been born again, all of them. And I said, how do, how do I teach people to be born again? 
And Jesus said, if any man would come after me, he has to deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So when you come to Jesus, you have to be willing to lay down your life and turn from your sin and deny yourself so that you can follow Jesus. But most people that accept Jesus don't, uh, don't know about denying themselves. In fact, I just recently heard that Billy Graham said probably only 5% of, of the thousands of people that come forward at a Billy Graham crusade are not saved. Leonard Ravenhill says only 1% of church members are saved. And Howard Pittman says only 10% members are saved. So uh, just because a person goes to church doesn't mean they're saved. But Jesus said you have to be born again. And the way you do that is you have to be willing to give up your life to follow him. So pray with me. If you've never if you've never been born again, say, Lord, forgive me for not being willing to deny myself and take up my cross and follow you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sin. I invite you, Holy Spirit of truth, to possess my body and drive out every evil spirit. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for my sin. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord and my Master and Lord I am your possession to do with what you please. And thank you that you're a good God. You're nothing like my mother or father. And, Lord, forgive me for not pursuing peace with all men and holiness and sanctification, without which you said no man will see you. Lord, forgive me for um, for the breach of charity. Lord, forgive me for um, abandoning the faith, the apostasy. Forgive me for ill will, grudge, extreme enmity. Lord, would you please forgive me for uh, uh, anger and wrath. Uh, uh, Forgive me, Lord, for biting sarcasm, severity of temper, uh, extreme wickedness. Lord, forgive me for uh, discouragement and feeling hopeless, not taking my sin to your throne of grace. Lord, I come to your throne of grace now. And, Lord, I forgive every person that you've shown me that has hurt me. Forgive me for all the times I've let the sun go down on my anger and given a foothold to the devil. Forgive me for committing physical adultery and spiritual adultery, which has opened me up to the curse of the law of jealousy, which has caused my stomach to swell and my thigh to waste away, caused um, sickness, caused death, caused barrenness and fruitlessness. God, forgive me for not producing good fruit. Lord, would you please forgive me for bitterness and wrath and clamor and anger and slander. Uh, Lord, forgive me for malice. God, forgive me for not being kind to others, tenderhearted, forgiving other people just as you've forgiven me. Lord, forgive me for not going to your throne of grace. God, forgive me for uh, coming short of the grace of God. Lord, I forgive my parents that they gave me a perverted image of you. I forgive them that they were not faithful, they weren't nurturing, they didn't want the best for me. Uh, Forgive them, Lord, if they uh, wouldn't forgive me or didn't direct me. Forgive me, I forgive them for giving me a perverted image of you. Lord, I forgive them for, I forgive my father and mother for provoking me to anger. Lord, forgive me for not allowing the trials I go through to conform me into your image. Forgive me, Lord, for not asking you what you're trying to teach me in the midst of my suffering, in the midst of each trial. Lord, forgive me for judging others and being angry toward others, which would cause me to become just like those I've judged. Forgive me for not counting it all joy when I go through various trials, knowing, Lord, that this this momentary affliction is leading to a far greater way in glory. Lord, forgive me for... uh, Forgive me for failing the test when I go through trials. Forgive me for being discouraged. Forgive me for pride. Lord, forgive me for uh, wrong choices. Uh, Lord, would you please forgive me for um, for the bitterness that would make me sick. Lord, you said forgive me for grumbling and complaining. God, would you please forgive me. Thank you, Lord, that you said you're my healer and my deliverer and that if I obey you that you'll not put any of the diseases on me that you put on the world thank you that you're my healer lord i come to you jesus and ask you lord i apply the blood of jesus to my problem i ask you to sweeten my bitter waters lord thank you that you died on the cross lord forgive me for uh, 
crucifying you. God, forgive me for uh, not believing that you want to heal me. God, in Jesus' name, I choose to die to sin, live to righteousness. And, Lord, you said by your stripes I am healed. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for producing bad fruit, which would cause me to be cut off and thrown in the fire and burned. Lord, would you please forgive me for judging other people and me having the same problem in my life that you're trying to uh, bring that another person in my life that shows me myself. Forgive me for guilt. Lord, I put my guilt under the blood of Jesus. I confess my sin. You said you're faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Forgive me for wanting revenge. Forgive me for greed. Lord, forgive me for taking of offenses for others. Forgive me for idolatry. I forgive every person that that, uh, disappointed me. I forgive those that have controlled me. Forgive me for controlling others. Forgive me for letting people control me. Lord, forgive me for wearing the yokes of other people and not wearing your yoke that produces the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, forgive me for not taking my hurt to the, to the cross. Forgive me for all the times I let the sun go down on my anger. Lord, I forgive, forgive me, Lord, for not taking my problems to you in the name of Jesus. I forgive every person that's rejected me or hurt me uh, verbally, physically, sexually, physically abused me, mentally abused me. I forgive my parents for not training me up in the way I should go. Uh, I forgive forgive every person who has not loved me. Uh, Forgive me, Lord, I forgive my mate for for disappointing me, loss of expectation, not being who I thought they were when I married them. Forgive me, Lord, for living uh, in sexual sin. I forgive my parents for not nurturing me. In the name of Jesus, uh, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I I invite your Holy Spirit to possess my body. Uh, I forgive every person, Lord, that's hurt me. Uh, Lord, I break soul ties with every person that's hurt me. I call back my soul and human spirit from every person that has hurt me uh, or that I've hurt. I send back their souls and their human spirits back to them. I exchange their image for the image of Christ. In Jesus' name, I command the spirit of bitterness to leave every person that I've named, every person who's listening now, every person who's prayed the prayer with me. I command the spirit of bitterness to leave their life. I command the spirit of cancer, the spirit of death, the spirit of barrenness, fruitfulness, and faithfulness. I command you to go all spirits of physical and chemical imbalance, every spirit that's lowered their resistance, all spirits of aching teeth, In the name of Jesus, I command all spirits of infirmity and guilt to go. Uh, I command hard facial features to go, Lord. I command a hard heart to go. Bone disease, I command you to go. Rotten bones, uh, every spirit that sent fire into the bones, rotten their bones, dismayed their bones. All spirits of mental illness, psychological problems, (coughs) sadness, depression, despair, hopelessness, (coughs) excuse me, barrenness heart problems. I command uh, all spirits of indigestion, all spirits of arthritis in the feet. Lord, uh, forgive me for being bitter toward my past, bitter toward people that have hurt me. I command all spirits of a depraved mind, Lord, forgive me for exchanging the truth of God for a lie and worshiping the creature rather than the creator. I command all spirits of bitterness to leave now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of rotten bones. I break the power of arthritis. In Jesus' name, I command you to go. I command acid reflux to go. The spirit of bitterness, the spirit of anger, fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, anxiety, tension, stress, nervousness, I command you to leave now in the name, power, blood, and by the authority of Jesus' name. Let's take a deep breath and and breathe out. In Jesus' name, I command every spirit to leave now. In Jesus' name, I tear out, rip out the root of bitterness. In Jesus' name. Spirit of Wormwood, Spirit of Lucifer, come out now in Jesus' name. I break your power over every life in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wherever a demon power left, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Now, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the ministry, and if you uh, want personal prayer, if you'll call in at 646-595-4784 and press 1, I'll be happy to pray for you. But a Mighty Life Ministries was started in 1978 by my hus- my late husband, Bob McGee. And um, I've been in deliverance and inner healing for 34 years. And you can go on to my website, jerrymcgee.com, and you can sign up for email. You can sign up for my mailing list. Um, and you, there um, you also can find a free article to read and free CDs to listen to. And you can order books. There's books you can order. Uh, I've written a book called Clearing the Land that's in Russian, and it's also in um, Spanish. And you can get deliverance just uh, going through that little book that lists generational curses. And uh, you can order all of that on my website. And as I said earlier, if you want a a meeting scheduled in your area, that you can email me at jerrymcgee at sbcglobal.net. If you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I do a Duncanville uh, deliverance meeting once a month. It's the second second Saturday of each month at 10 o'clock from 10 to 4, and it's free. And so if you will sign up for my email, I'll send send out a flyer when I'm going to be in that area. And so I hope you'll be listening in again. And um, uh, if you would like a schedule uh, of our meetings, just uh, sign up for our email. Uh, the, the lady that sponsors this program, uh, if you want to give a gift through PayPal to her, her email address is D, like Dorothy, Churchy, like church, C-H-U-R-C-Y, one, number one, at hotmail.com. And if you appreciate any of you who can uh, support Abiding Life Ministries, you can also go online to jerrymcgee.com, and you can give a gift through PayPal if you choose to do so. Anyway, thank you for listening in. I hope you'll listen in next month, and if no one calls in, the program will be over. I'll wait just a few more minutes. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you, and I hope to um, be with you again on the the first, uh, the, I'm sorry, the third week in, third Tuesday in um, August. God bless you.